next I'm going to show you how to perform what is called synthetic division. We can do synthetic division with polynomials if the divisor is linear okay which means it's in the form of ax plus b and you're going to see that the preferred method is if the coefficient in front of the x is just a 1 so i just have an x plus b that's the preferred one if i have a coefficient in front of that it makes it a little messy and i'm going to show you why once we show you how to do it so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do regular long division again, just to show you the, I get the same answer. So a reminder, when you write out for your regular long division, your dividend needs to have every term. So if you're missing a term, you need to put a zero for it in there. And my divisor's on the outside. Okay, leading term over leading term. x cubed divided by x is x squared. Then I multiply. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 3 is 3x three squared. Parentheses around both terms and subtract. Any number minus itself is 0. 4 minus 3 is 1 of my x squareds. Bring down the rest of the terms. Leading term, x squared over leading term x, x squared divided by x is x. Multiply, x times x is x squared, x times 3 is 3x. Three Parentheses and subtract. Any number minus itself is 0, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4, and those are x's. Leading term over leading term, negative 4x divided by x is negative 4. Multiply, negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Parentheses and subtract. Any number minus itself is 0. 1 minus a minus 12 is 1 plus 12, which is 11. So I now have a remainder of 11 over x plus 3. So again, that's a review of the long division. And now what I'm going to do is show you how to set up this exact same problem using synthetic division. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to set our divisor equal to 0 and solve. So if I set x plus 3 equal to 0 and solve it, I get negative 3. And that is going to go right here. Step two. Copy the coefficients of the dividend. So those coefficients are the numbers in front of each of my terms. So I have a 1, a 4, a negative 1, and a negative 1. Key note here, put in any missing zeros. And I'm going to do an example that shows you that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to follow... Um, some steps. Okay, the first step we're going to do is we're going to copy. So my next step is to copy. So I'm going to take that one and I'm just going to copy it on down there. And then after that, my steps that I'm going to repeat as many times as necessary are multiply and add. And we're going to keep on repeating those. So what I mean by multiply, I'm going to take this 1 times the negative 3 and get a negative 3. Then I'm going to add 4 minus 3 is 1. 
Then I multiply. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Then I add. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Then I multiply. Negative 3 times negative 4 is 12. Add. Negative 1 plus 12 is 11. So I come down, copy it, I multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and add. And I'm just going to clean this up a little bit and write down the numbers I had. I had 1, 1, negative 4, and 11. This last number here is your remainder. And at the end of this lecture, you're also going to find out that that number is also the value of the function when I stick negative 3 into my original function. Okay? So that number gives us two things. One, it gives us the remainder. And two, it gives us the value of the function when I stick that number into the original function. So this doesn't look like the answer I wrote down here. It's close. So what we had here is I took a cubic divided by a linear. So my final answer is going to be a quadratic because it's one degree less. So I start with my left-hand term. I'm going to make that an x squared plus 1x minus 4 plus my remainder. So this amount of work right here, this little bit right here, replaces all of this. And when I did the original lecture, when I did leading term over leading term, I wrote them all out over here. So this could take quite a bit of work where this takes very little work. Okay. Now the reason why um, I pr it's best if it's only x plus a number or x minus a number is if I set this equal to 0, the ax plus b, subtract the b, and I get ax equals negative b, divide by a, I get x equals negative b over a. That's the number that you're going to be putting out in front here. That means every time you multiply, you're going to be multiplying by a fraction. And all these integer numbers that were here, you're going to be adding them to fractions, which means you're going to have to turn these into fractions. And then you're going to be multiplying them by another fraction. So I would not do synthetic division if I have a fraction, if, if the A is there, okay? There may be other methods that are better to do the synthetic division, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do three more examples. And then on those last three examples, like I said, we're going to take this number um, here. We're going to plug it back into the original function. And we're going to see that I actually do get that last number over there. And that fact is going to come in to help you come factor numbers. And I'm going to show you how at the end of the lecture. So our next example is another cubic. It's 4x cubed. plus x squared minus 3x plus 7 divided by x minus 1. So step 1 was to set this factor equal to 0 and solve. And when we were factoring quadratics, I said, I don't expect to see any work for you to set that equal to 0 and solve it because it's just changing the sign of that number. So that x minus 1 becomes a 1. My next step is to write down all of my coefficients. 4, 1, negative 3, 7. Then follow my algorithm. Copy. Multiply. 1 times 4 is 4. Add. 1 plus 4 is 5. Multiply. 5. Add. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Multiply. 1 times 2 is 2. Add. 7 plus 2 is 9. <coughs> then what I do, starting from the left, to write it as the polynomial answer, I'm going to take 1 degree less than what I started with in my dividend. I started with x cubed, so I'm going to write x squared plus 5x 
plus 2, plus my remainder. Okay. And what I'm going to do is we're going to now put this 1 back into the original equation and see that we get the 9. Okay. So if I put a 1 here, I get 1, 1, and 1. So if I put a 1 into this function, the top function, I get 4 plus 1 minus 3 plus 7. 4 plus 1 is 5, minus 3 is 2, 2 plus 7 is 9. Okay? So another name for synthetic division is synthetic substitution. Because what it does is it says, hey, if I put a 1 in there, I can use that to synthetically substitute, and that is the answer. So what this is telling me, on the graph of this function for the top um, polynomial, if I put a 1 in for x, my y-coordinate is 9. So that's a way that you can quickly come up with y-coordinates for your xy table to plot extra points. Next one I'm going to do has a little twist in it. It is x cubed minus 5x plus 3 over x minus 2. So step one was to take this factor, set it equal to 0, and solve. So that's a 2. Then I copy my coefficients down. 1, but I'm missing the x squared, so I have to put a 0. Then the minus 5, and then the 3. Copy, multiply, add, Multiply, add, multiply, add. So let's check. So I copied the 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. There we go. That's where I messed up. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. So now I write down my answer. 1 degree less than x cubed is x squared plus 2x minus 1 plus 1 over x minus 2. Let's put a 2 into the original function. 2 cubed is 8. 5 times 2 is 10. And then plus 3. 8 minus 10 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 3 is in fact 1. So the th reason why I did this example was to show you that um, you had to put the zero in there. Okay, the next one I'm going to do is x squared plus 4x minus 5 over x plus 5. Set this equal to 0 and solve. It gives me a negative 5. Coefficient is a 1, 4, negative 5. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to follow my rules, which are copy, multiply. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. Add. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Multiply. Negative 1 times negative 5 is 5. Add negative 5 plus 5 is 0. I do not have a remainder here. So 1 degree less than x squared is x. So what my final answer would be x minus 1. Note that if the remainder is 0, that means you evenly divided your divisor into your dividend. So, And you should see this now if you see this number and this number, because the top is the exact same thing as x plus 5 times x plus 1, minus 1, sorry. And we had that divided by x plus 5. Two numbers that multiply to negative 5 that add to 4 would have been 5 and negative 1. And I'm left with the x minus 1. One thing I want to show you is sometimes it be quicker. So synthetic division to me is quick. Sometimes it's even quicker if you can just look at it, factor it by inspection, and realize 
that things cancel out. Okay? And if I put a negative 5 into my original equation, negative 5 squared is 25. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20, minus 5. 25 minus 20 minus 5 is, in fact, 0. So again, what this is telling you is that if I put a negative 5 into my original function, I have a 0 for my y-coordinate, which is an x-intercept. It's also telling me that if I divide by x plus 5, I'm left with x minus 1 with no remainder. Okay? Synthetic division, there will be times when it comes time to factor polynomials um, that if you have good numbers to guess of what are possible zeros of your polynomial, doing synthetic division to see if you get a zero here is going to be an easy way for you to check that. So that's where synthetic division um, down the road is going to come into play. Right now, you're just going to practice doing the algorithm over and over again to come up with our remainders and or our values sticking certain numbers into the functions.